So hi everyone. Uh, I hope you are doing well. Uh, recently, we dealt with organizations related vocabulary in which we discussed and defined the meaning of an international organization. We gave examples of these organizations and the field each one of them are concerned about. Today is a new session in which we are going to focus on some of these organizations and how they do their work. First, let's see if you still remember what each of these logos refer to. Let's start, for example, with this one. It's a UNICEF, right? I think there is a mother with her child, maybe. So that's UNICEF. You can guess what is the concern of this organization. This one is a ICRC, or the International Committee of the Red Cross. Moving on to this one. All right, we have animals, we have peoples, all right, so different species, everything is in green. So here we are talking about uh, Greenpeace, the organization called Greenpeace. And the last one, it's uh, like the world, all right, it's the earth maybe. And there is uh, two letters inside that circle. There is uh, T and I. So this one referred to Transparency International. We are going to talk about the focus of, of each of these organizations, all right? Okay, so do you know anything about the history of these organizations? Like when were they founded, who founded them, etc. Okay, so let's start with this uh, small passage, all right? So in the aftermath of World War II, in the aftermath. Aftermath, it's like after, right? So, aftermath of World War II. A lot of international organizations were created. We need an E here. Okay, were created with E. To help deal with problems and issues related to education, economy, environment, health, etc. So when were the organization founded? It's uh, after the World War II. All right. Okay. For what reason they were created or founded? It's in order to deal with problems and issues like what? Issues or problems of uh, or related to education, related to economy or uh, environment okay and of course health uh, some of the most prominent organizations are unicef icrc greenpeace transparency international so prominent like we say the most famous right or the most dominant organizations are unicef icrc and so on and so forth all right i think uh concerning my student i shared with you these texts, all right, in which there is a definition of each of these organizations, their concern, their history, how they are, for example, uh, funded, all right, how, where do they get money, and uh, many, many other information concerning each of these uh, organizations. I'm speaking about Greenpeace, UNICEF, ICRC, and uh, Transparency International. So, we are not going to explain this texts, all right, this small passage, but we are going just to do the correction, all right, of uh, the exercises I gave you, or I shared with you in our groups. So, starting with the first one, are these statements true or false and justify? And as uh, we used to, all right, are we used to, actually, uh, you are going to justify in both cases, whether it is true or false. So, let's start with the first one. Greenpeace accepts donations from everyone. Donations. Hibo. Or hibet. Okay? Donations from everyone. Is it true or false? It's a false. Okay? So, false. Why? Because Greenpeace doesn't accept donations from governments or corporations okay let's move on to the next one 
Greenpeace is concerned with helping political refugees. We talked about uh, refugees. Uh, refugees who are all right? Uh, and political refugees who are CSE. So Greenpeace is concerned, that means the focus of uh, Greenpeace is uh, to help political refugees. Is it true or false? Absolutely, it's uh, false. What is the concern of Greenpeace? It's a uh, Focus on the most crucial worldwide threats. Tehdidat, alright. Tehdidat, to head the line, alright. It's answered, understand it in this way. Greenpeace focuses on the most crucial worldwide threats uh, to our planet's biodiversity. Biodiversity, it's uh, speaking about uh, biological diversity. That means the. Uh, it's like uh, helping and saving. And protecting uh, different species that live that live on our planet, okay? Whether they are, for example, people, Homo sapiens, or we are speaking about other animals, birds, uh, cats, uh, lions, uh, buffaloes, and so on and so forth. And also we are speaking about uh, trees, uh, grass, and uh, all those plants, okay? So it's biodiversity too. Concerned, it's uh, to focus on the most crucial worldwide threats uh, to our planet's biodiversity and, of course, environment. Greenpeace campaigns to stop climate change. This is the focus of Greenpeace. Stop climate change, protect forests, save the oceans, denounce genetic engineering. Genetic engineering. That means, for example, to control the, for example, the gene engineering. Uh, genetic engineering, so like changing or editing or modifying the gene mapping of uh, creatures and species. Uh, stop the nuclear threat. Nuclear. You are familiar with this one. So they did it in Namibia. Eliminate toxic chemicals. Eliminate them. Alright, so this is the focus or the concern of Greenpeace. The third one. Greenpeace is a violent militant organization. Is it true or false? It's a false. Why? Because Greenpeace has no permanent allies or enemies. Blaisa, Ladeha, Ada, the Imun, or Asdaqa, the Imun. Okay? So it's not violent. So no permanent allies or enemies. It promotes open, informed debate. Debate here we are speaking about Munadarat. Uh, Alright, so Munadara about society's environmental choices and so on. So yes, you can keep just this one. Greenpeace has no permanent allies or enemies. It can be considered as a, a right answer. Great. So we dealt with Greenpeace. Let's move now to the ICRC or the International Committee of the Red Cross or Crescent. What is the difference between the Red Cross and the Red Crescent? To mention this, the Red Cross is uh, what is used in the most of Christian uh, countries. Where Crescent is uh, Muslim countries, okay? So, Starib al-Ahmar and Al-Hil al-Ahmar. This is the meaning. Great, let's move on. So, answer these uh, questions from the text. The first one, where are the ICRC headquarters situated? It is situated in Geneva, okay? Two, who funds the ICRC? Who funds, not who founded? Who founded the yani, ASSA? Who funds yani, uh, Mumawil? Man Mumawil, okay? So, who funds the ICRC? The answer is, is funded by contributions from governments, na national Red Cross and Christian societies, super national organizations such as the European Commission and private sources. The third one, why was the ICRC logo changed to a red crystal? Why? Whenever you have a question starting with why, the answer is always because, okay? So, we are going to say because this logo unfortunately doesn't please all countries of the world. That means there is a conflict of accepting, oh, they are holding, for example, a flag that contains a... Uh, uh, cross, so it is not accepted by non-Christian people, whether they are Muslim, Hindus, or whatever. Okay, 
and uh, it's uh, vice versa. So red crescent is not accepted by non-Muslim countries. So yes, it's a. Uh, it creates a conflict between countries so the best thing is to create a new one a neutral logo a neutral flag it's a red crystal okay it's like muayyan muayyan bil ahmar this is the new flag that icrc use great <clears throat> let's move on now to the next organization which is unicef all right let's start with the first question when was the unicef established it was established on or in 1946 in post World War II. Post or aftermath. All right, it's the same. Post better. After World War II. Number two. In what areas does the organization provide its assistance? It's a emergency relief and run long-term development programs in areas such as health, education, and child protection you can answer just simply in health education and child protection and full stop the next one in what areas does the organization okay do we answer this one number three the last one how does the unicef raise funds we talked about funds for its programs how you are going to give me the manner how we are going to how they do actually how do they raise funds for its uh, programs the answer is uh, raises funds for these programs through donations sale of cards and gifts partnerships with companies and special events so this is uh, the answer great the last one uh, transparency international or ti Questions: What are the political views of TI? All right, we can summarize this it in these lines. It leads the fight against corruption and it's a devastating. What do I mean by corruption? Corruption, who? Fasad. Okay, it can be administrative corruption, fasad uh, al-idari, financial corruption. It's al uh, fasad al and so on and so forth and devastating impact on men, women and children around the world. Okay, so this is how it works. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay, moving on to the next question. What does the organization combat? What does it fight? So the answer is it fights corruption on the ground and it's corruption and bribery what is bribery bribery in arabic it's a rishwa okay corruption al fasad bribery rishwa number 3 how does ti improve the lives of people how the manner the answer is by raising awareness and diminishing indifference and tolerance of corruption it's by raising awareness awareness away by raising the rough family away and diminishing indifference and tolerance of corruption so we have dealt with all the organization we saw now we are going to move to this exercise here you have a couple of information we are going to classify them according to the organization they belong to so speaking for example about the first one protect forests who is protecting forests amongst these organizations is it greenpeace icrc unicef or ti okay so the answer is green peace and there we have other things okay so if you didn't do this exercise you can stop the video and each one of these information okay to classify them in the table according to the organization they belong to correction is uh, this one so greenpeace all right stop climate change protect forests save the oceans denounce genetic engineering stop the nuclear threat eliminate toxic chemicals international Committee of the Red Cross, 
provide medical assistance for prisoner, prisoners, the wounded and sick, and civilians affected by conflicts and disasters. UNICEF provide emergency relief and run long-term development programs in areas such as health, education, and child protection. Upholds the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child. Hold the international community responsible for their promises to children. Uh, TI fight against corruption and its devastating impact, raising awareness and diminishing indifference and tolerance of corruption. Promote transparency in elections, in public administration, and in business. Great, so this is uh, the case. And for my students, you are going to copy this on your copybooks part lessons. All right, reading international organization is unit number eight. Great, let's discuss this uh, picture over here. What, what do you see here? Okay, we have a, a group of people, they are walking, some of them are holding some papers, maybe flags, okay, great, so this is a rally or demonstration, protest or march, rally, demonstration, march, or protest. As we say, it's a mudahara in Arabic. Mudahara. Great, moving on. So, here we have uh, a text. We are going to read this text and to decide the appropriate title. You take two minutes to answer this one. In three, you are going to stop the video. One, two, three. You stop the video and you read the text and choose the appropriate title for the text. Okay, this is the correction. But before we do the correction, choose the best title. Let's uh, explain the text. So starting with the first line. 15-year-old Matthew Hector called on a crowd of 20,000 people to fight world poverty. There is something amazing about English, okay? It starts with who. Who. Any sentence started with who. This who can be, for example, a person or it can be a subject. Something which is not uh, human, alright? So, starting with the first... Uh, sentence and uh, applying this one there okay so who it's a 15 year old matthew hector what what did he do called on a crowd of 20000 people for what reason why to fight world poverty so who what why moving on he was one of many people who spoke out at a recent rally or large meeting in London, England. So who again, we are still speaking about Matthew Hector, was one of many people who spoke out of a recent rally or large meeting where in London, England. We believe the world should be fair so that everyone has the same opportunity to have a good life. Who said this? It's uh, Matthew Hector again. We believe the world should be fair, should be just, so that everyone has the same opportunity to have a good life. Next, uh, the rally. The rally, we have explained this. It's as we saw in the picture. The rally launched, launched, atlaka, okay, or utlaka, launched, a worldwide, or launched its atlaka, here in this context, launched a worldwide campaign called Make Poverty History. It's Jal al Fakr min al Tariq. That means it won't be existing anymore, okay? Make Poverty History. The goal was to challenge world leaders to end the 
poverty. This is the goal. Uh, next, uh, people who live in people who live in poverty don't have enough money, food, and medical care for a healthy life. In this slide, we are explaining or defining who is a poor man or who is living in poverty. It's the one who doesn't have enough money. Is this the only trait? No. Don't have enough money. N enough. Don't have enough food. Middle ca medical care. I'm sorry. Medical care. And uh, yes, that's it. Okay. So poverty is uh, a person who doesn't have enough money, doesn't have enough food doesn't have medical care for a healthy life. This is a poor man, and this is poverty. More than a billion people around the world are poor. Here are speaking about statistics, the number of people. More than a billion, a billion, milliard. People around the world are poor. Okay? All right, there are more details concerning these statistics. About a half, or about half of those people are children. That means uh, one billion, okay? 500 millions are of poor people are children. Okay, that means half of those people are children. And there is more thing more more things to say about these the statistics. So many of the poorest countries are in Africa. So billion people are poor, half of them are children. Many of these of the poor poorest poorest is the superlative form of poor. Poorest countries are in situated in Africa. The last part, one of the most famous speakers at the rally was Nelson Mandela. Who is Nelson Mandela? He was the former president of South Africa. He has a famous uh, story actually. He was in prison and then he became the president of uh, South Africa. Alright, Mandela urged, that means pushed, urged people to help those in need. He said, while there is poverty, there is no true freedom. Madame Hunak, while, Madame Hunak, there is, Madame Hunak, Fakr, there is no true freedom. Madame Hunak, Fakr. فليست هناك حرية حقيقية. This is what uh, who said this. It's uh, Nelson Mandela. Great. So based on this explanation, what do you think is the best title for this text? It's uh, the third one. Rally against poverty. Rally against poverty. If we say that to rally for poverty, in some contexts it's acceptable. All right. But let's. Uh, Avoid ambiguity and use just the rally against poverty. Great. Moving on to the next exercise. Here we are. So where did the rally take place? Again, you take two minutes to answer this exercise. One, two, three. Do your exercise and stop the video. Alright, let's do the correction. So the first one, where did the rally take place? It's uh, in London, England. Exactly. Number two, what was the objective of the rally? The purpose of it? It's uh, the goal was to challenge world leaders to end, to eliminate poverty. Great. The third one, who is the most affected by poverty? Alright, so we said that when we talked about statistics, half billion are children, and many of the poorest, many of the poorest uh, countries are in Africa. The last one: who is the most affected by poverty? Exactly, that's what we uh, we have answered. Sorry. All right. So we dealt with this exercise. Now let's move to the next one. You have one minute to answer this one. Which international organization can help solve this problem? Is it UNICEF, ICRC, or Oxfam? We talked about UNICEF, you talked about ICRC, and in vocabulary we talked about the interests of Oxfam. 
So one minute to do this one. Again, one, two, three. You stop the video and you do the exercise. Okay, so what do you think is the organization, the appropriate organization to solve this problem? It's a Oxfam, exactly. It's the one who is fighting famine and poverty around the world. Great, I think we dealt with the text and the reading session. Here you have an assignment to do. Okay, it's assignment number to the first one. It was about creating an organization, choose a title, acronym, and to uh, set its uh, focus on its interest. And now, it's assignment number two. We are going to write a small paragraph suggesting, suggesting ways in which uh, the world can fight poverty. All right, and please, don't exceed... Uh, don't exceed 10 lines in order to have the ability to read all your suggestions. Okay? Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next session.